running yeah. a happiness quest okay. that's based upon uh, a research question of how can a community, a town-wide uh, focus on happiness, increase individual self-reported levels of happiness. All right, so the quest itself, it begins yeah. with a survey for individuals who are aligned with Plymouth. So they uh, do not have to be a resident in Plymouth, but obviously all the residents would qualify uh, to fill out the survey. But if they go to school here, if they work here, okay. if they volunteer here, so if they have any sort of affiliation or alignment with Plymouth, um, they qualify for the actual research study that's involved. Okay. Now, everyone can attend the events, and those will just be yeah. fun. Right, <laughs> um, absolutely. But to qualify for the research event, they have to have some sort of connection to the town of Plymouth. Okay. We're finalizing the survey right now. Our process at the university level is we have to go through uh, what we refer to as an IRB review, an institutional review board, anytime there are human beings involved in research. And so we're finalizing the survey, which will then be submitted to the IRB. And the plan right now, and I feel like I should knock on wood um, because my data team has been working very vehemently on this, uh, should be submitted on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the kinds of questions, there'll be some demographic-based questions, age, you know, trying to identify individuals uh, and kind of where they're positioned in their life and geographically. Um, but then the questions are really focused on um, variables that would tell us uh, about how they view their own life uh, within the context of are they living a full and flourishing life right now okay. or are if they imagine their ideal life uh, are they a small distance from that ideal life or a great distance from that and yeah. so those are, those are the kinds of questions on the survey is to see at the beginning of this year-long quest where would I as someone filling out this survey pinpoint my level of a full and excellent life now mm -hmm. and then after 35 activities over a 12-month period fill out the same survey have my responses changed at all uh, did participating in these activities impact how i view my own life so it's not a one-size-fits-all it's not trying to give answers to people or make everyone happy it's really putting um the uh, I don't know what to say responsibility, but it's basically the, the energy that's going to go into this is back on the individual mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. figure out for themselves what does a, an excellent or flourishing life look like? If I could draw a picture of my ideal life, what does that mm -hmm. look like? And then am I living that? You it's know? an individual internal journey that we're taking together Absolutely. as a community. And right. one important thing to note as well is we're serving adults. So though we want children and youth to be a huge presence in this whole community That's initiative for the Happiness Quest, adults will be the only population surveyed. Yeah, right? we're not collecting data on minors, right. so they have to be 18 and yeah. over. But we, again, we want them to participate, we want right. them to be a huge presence. We're going to have high school students, you know, hosting activities That's and awesome. kids involved on, you know, a very... Um, a very intimate level in some cases. I mean, the youth center has gotten involved with brainstorming and we're gonna host a life-size Jenga game. So mm -hmm. we want everyone in the community to be involved, but the adults are gonna be the only population surveyed. Sure. Yeah, and we're also hoping this causes a ripple effect throughout the region, not mm -hmm. just Plymouth, but for yeah. the survey population to be manageable, right? And Maria will right. speak to this. It has to be this Plymouth community. Yeah, it has to be something that we can see the parameters yeah. and limit yeah. it. However, one of the main goals that I'm hoping will come out of this is we can develop a model that other towns could adopt, other even regional right. organizations could say, hey, we want to do a happiness quest. And we could share with them, here are the steps that we took, here are some of the challenges we ran into, uh, and here are some of the things that worked really well. And there's a number, more? yeah, there's a number of, uh, I guess we can call them sub-events that mm -hmm. we're compiling together for the kickoff. One I'm really excited about, and uh, I hope to even have on this show um, sometime during the next year, uh, is one of our students, uh, Taylor Rasavicius, developed one of the activities that will be at the kickoff event. And it was a very simple concept that uh, when I had asked my students, well, what makes you happy? She mm -hmm. said, you know, I used to love drawing on sidewalks with chalk. And as we thought about it, it's like, well, who doesn't? Yeah, you know, we, we all love that. <laughs> we love drawing yeah. on sidewalk with chalks. And there are so few places you can do that anymore. And so one of the activities at the kickoff event is called Chalked Full of Happiness. Mm -hmm. And there will be uh, chalk boards 
Uh, some are cut out in certain shapes. Uh, some will be like the sandwich boards uh, that you can see in front of different businesses. And then also we've gained permission to, for that day, be able to also draw on the sidewalks. And the prompt of what makes you happy will be given to any of the participants, and again, of all ages. Mm -hmm. And then we'd like them to just write or draw things that make them happy. And so again, simple it's concepts. It's gonna be like you said, great visuals mm -hmm. here. Right. Uh, the optics will be great. It's gonna <laughs> be amazing. And just a wonderful time for us to come together as a community to launch us together. That's mm -hmm. one event, there's mm -hmm. gonna be others. Yep. There will be music. It's just going to be a fun time to and kick off. What time is this going to be? I guess not at night. 10 to 2, right? Yeah. 10 in the morning not until 2 in the, morning in the afternoon. Yes. 10 to 2. <laughs> yep. Yes. And we've been planning this now. It's over a year. About a year and a half yeah. has been going into the planning. And I think one of the uh, areas that I've really enjoyed in planning the Happiness Quest is to watch the excitement with community members who mm -hmm. are involved in the planning and the equal level of excitement with college students who've yeah. been involved in the planning, and very few of them have met yet. And so right. I'm looking forward to, during these activities, to be able to bring the college students and the community members in the same spaces and right. literally right. let them play together, because it's a lot of what mm -hmm. we're doing is playing. And for all of us involved in the meetings, playing the happiness quests, it's already had a positive impact oh, yeah. on us all. They're we fun meetings. We love going to those <laughs> meetings. I look forward to it. I leave completely enthusiastic about what we're doing. Yeah. So it's already starting to create a lot of enthusiasm mm -hmm. and a lot of support, and people are asking all over the place. So, And like Maria said, we've been working on this for a year, over a year. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's the idea for this bubbled up from our community conversation group, which has been yeah. meeting since April 2014. So we've had a group of community members from, you know, representing different sectors throughout our community, taking a collective impact approach to community initiatives mm -hmm. and efforts. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of ideas. We were talking about bike paths and activities we could do together. And all of a sudden, this magical meeting that happened right here in Pease Public Library, <laughs> someone said, you know, I read a book about happiness. And I looked across the table at Maria she perked up. I was already smiling. <laughs> this is her field. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, all the pieces came together. We realized that everything that we'd been talking about and really wanting to work on fell underneath this umbrella of a thriving life and mm -hmm. what it means to be happy individually, but also in a community. So we've been working on this concept for a long time and really excited about how far it's come. And it's been truly a community effort. And that's Rashford's really up. unique because quite often when there are community-based studies or research projects, it's an individual that has an idea and brings it right. to the community. This mm -hmm. occurred the other way around. It was literally the community came up with the idea and it right. bubbled up to involving the researchers. Yeah. And so that's mm -hmm. another angle to this I'm really excited about. Because, and I'm trying to stay true to that throughout the entire project. So in coming up with ideas for the events, what I did not want to happen is have either Jess and I or a small group of faculty from the campus to sit in a room and come up with all these ideas. I wanted it to come from the community. So we've held multiple town-wide brainstorming events. Uh, I went into the PEMI Youth Center to get the, the youth perspective on if you, you know if you were gonna hold a quest, what kind of activities would you like to see? We held multiple brainstorming sessions on campus. So there have been an equal number of off-campus and on-campus uh, brainstorming that literally resulted in 400 suggested ideas. Uh -huh. And I said, well, this is very exciting, <laughs> but we can't do 400 <laughs> <laughs> events. Not in one year. <laughs> Not in one year. Many years All these to come. events came from yeah, That was time. interesting. Um, there was a lot of overlap, especially in the events that we whittled it down to including. And we tried to merge some where we yeah. weren't, it, when I say there are 35 events included, there are actually more than that that were suggested, but we were able to compile a few things. So we have them together. Um, yeah. But there were some it's instant. Like list. Yeah, I would yeah. Like to see that list sometimes. And I have that list. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was interesting though that there were certain things that you could definitely tell, particularly from certain age groups. Um, mm -hmm. When I had the brainstorming sessions with high schoolers, quite often the suggested ideas you could tell was coming from their environment, mm -hmm. the bubble which within which. Uh, they were existing. Um, and yet, I would have a similar idea at a community level. 
So for example, one of them uh, that came out from the high schoolers is a group of seniors said, you know, we really ought to have a more supportive mentoring program firmly in place for the freshmen coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, that I remember when I was a freshman and the transitions that didn't need to happen if someone had just laid it all out. At the same time, I had a community group going, boy, wouldn't it be great if we had like this mentoring program for college students that were going into businesses? Right. And then all I need to do is connect, well, what about mentoring where we get the college students to mentor the seniors in high school, and now you have a chain of mentoring yeah. going on. I so it was a lot of those kind of where they may have been questions. pockets of ideas, but because I had them all together, I could stand back and go, oh, look, they're all saying the same mm -hmm. thing, but from their perspective or their yeah. lens. I guess I was confused. I thought you were talking about the activities. I, ideas oh, yeah, there the is activities. other activities. There's all kinds of I activities. Mean, we yeah. mentioned the life-size Jenga game, which I got really life excited about. Life-size Jenga game is one. Yes. I yes. Wasn't There's going there. to be a cookie-themed uh, they're calling Lock. it the apology, but it's basically based off of the sorry game. Yeah. And it was a group of philosophy majors, so they renamed it as Plato's Apology rather than mm -hmm. sorry. But it's a yeah. life size sorry game yeah, uh, wow. where the participants become the pieces yeah. in the game. But all the only currency you can use are cookies. Oh. And so it's a cookie themed yeah. sorry oh, yeah. game. Oh, this life great. size. Yeah. Uh, Anybody can play this. There's exactly. thing that Anybody Cynthia Robinson at PSU is hosting is a walk about Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. So that community members are going to come together on Wednesdays okay. and walk to tour different um, Basically places art on themed. In, throughout the community with art. Art. Yes. Okay. There so. will be group hikes. Yeah. Uh, nice. Where again, we may meet up either at a place that we're going to hike or somewhere in advance where we travel mm -hmm. uh, and can hike together. Uh, we're planning a uh, town wide camping event mm -hmm. where you bring your own tent. Okay, that'll but we have to be earlier. <laughs> <on. laughs> yeah. right? That's not a winter activity. <laughs> and then we have different activities and events that have historically been hosted in the community that are a part of this as well, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, the holiday celebration okay, is going to yeah. be on the calendar to bring yes. community yeah. members together right. and to celebrate. And then the share fair, which was another initiative of the community conversation, that will be on the calendar. Some of the fundraisers that our nonprofit partners are hosting to raise funds for their organizations, that will be tied in. So okay, yeah. there'll be new things and familiar things to participate in. Yeah, in a different way. What about the themes? Can we talk about the different yes, themes? Yes, the way the activities are organized is they're organized within six themes. Okay. And uh, the themes, if you take the first letter of each theme, it spells out uh, every person should come back happy is the easy way to remember it. Uh, but the first one, every, is engaged life or engaged living. Oh, okay. Positive living, simplified living, connected living, balanced living and healthy living. Okay, so those are the keys to happiness as we know them. Well, they're the it's variables, the categories yeah. that we're looking uh, at. But those are the sort of things you kind of want to... And within about. each of those, yeah. so like the first two months, October and November, will be focused on engaged life, so engaging uh, people in the community. Yeah. Okay. So all of the activities scheduled for October and November have that common theme. Okay. of engaging engagement and, right. and certainly mm -hmm. people don't have to know all these things they no. just show up they just show up and enjoy and yeah. i guess the and other thing that's it. worth clarifying is if someone decides they want to participate in the entire quest okay. it doesn't mean they're committing to going to every single activity right. what they're committing to is yeah, filling the survey the at the beginning <laughs> and they're committing to yeah. the survey at the end okay yeah and then to attend some events whatever mm -hmm. like basically attracts them Mm -hmm. they go to those events but it's not where they have to be present for every single and on event. the flip side of that you don't have to have taken the survey to enjoy the events no. and activities everyone comes yeah to the everyone and we're hoping okay. again to bring in more people as we go so you don't have to have come to the kickoff event to enjoy something in the spring right but so. it would be helpful you know if, if people showed up to the first one and, and the more oh exactly taking yeah. the survey mm -hmm. the better right that would, that would right sure. so that is october 22nd Downtown. Yeah. Downtown. From 10 to 2. That is correct. And there'll be some surprises, some exciting things happening. Yeah, that so you're not going to reveal <laughs> right now. We'll, we'll s we're still in planning mode, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's constantly being tweaked, but there are some surprises. As a philosopher, uh, one thing that I'm always interested in, anytime I'm involved in research or activities, events, is the reflective component of it. So throughout this entire quest, 
Uh, I would like to see a lot of opportunities for people to be able to learn about what others have said about happiness. Now again, remembering mm -hmm. it's not a one size fits all, so it may or may not apply to their situation. But the more informed we are, uh, that helps us as we're, uh, as Socrates would say, learning about to know ourselves, learning about yeah. ourselves. Um, but along the way, we'll get a lot more out of this quest if we're reflecting and not just attending an event right. passively. Mm -hmm. And so there will be um, monthly philosophical talks, which are really reflective talks about happiness. And you have a radio show, I just said it. Yes, I have a radio show. A radio There'll be lots of opportunities yeah. for people to become familiar with what psychology and economics and the scientific community have said about happiness, what the philosophers have written about happiness, and then reflect on their own lives, uh, which of these pieces apply to them. So, <laughs> you must be whenever, about yeah, it. whenever yeah. we're engaged in research, again, we have to be very careful not to presuppose what right. conclusions we think okay. will come. Um, however, <laughs> as I would, yeah, how I would lay yeah. this out, uh, from a lot of the positive psychologist research, uh, it has been shown that being more connected to your community uh, tends to correlate to individuals reporting a, self, a higher self-reported level of happiness. Um, so what we're looking at is really building on that research. Mm -hmm. Well, if that correlation has already been justified, does it matter how they're connected? Do different kinds of activities have different impacts? And so that's the new yeah. angle that we're coming at. I would venture uh, to make a guess that I think there will be an impact in one year. I'm not sure it'll be a, a real huge variation that we see mm -hmm. um, from the beginning of the 12 months to the end. Um, where I could see maybe the greatest uh, change is going to be in the reflective element. Mm -hmm. um, the awareness that people have of n uh, not only research about happiness, but being mindful and reflective of our own lives. Mm -hmm. All too often we get busy, we get in our routines, and we forget to just pause and appreciate the moment we're in, yeah. you know, to live in the present. Live presently. And think about, are these things that I think I'm uh, pursuing things that I really want, mm -hmm. or are they messages that others have fed to me that I want? Mm -hmm. So really rethinking our lives from the ground up as mm -hmm. reflective adults. And we do. Yeah. Sometimes we get stuck in that, you know, checklist mm -hmm. and we just go through the motions to, to survive the day and get through the day and do everything we have to do on that checklist and we forget to actually live. Exactly. You know, and act mm -hmm. and I have felt already an impact just planning mm -hmm. it and like I said, going to those meetings and a shift within myself and wanting to find more balance and more connection and find meaning in what everything that I'm doing, regardless of what role I'm in in the moment or what task is at hand, but finding that I'm living more presently and able to invest all of myself in that moment, instead of thinking about what's happening an hour ago or what's gonna happen a week from now, but actually being in that moment and investing myself. And that is part of finding meaning, and that's already mattered to me. So yeah. I can just imagine how it just that awareness is gonna matter for all of us. And I do want to say what an honor it's been to work with Maria. Oh, it's right so, back at you, it's Jess. It's so true. And I do have to say it because, you know, I, I have the privilege of working in high-impact learning on campus and civic engagement, working with students, <laughs> thinking about community projects and what matters to our community partners. And then, of course, my role at the Pema Youth Center and being so immersed with youth and, and community. And so Maria's first faculty day or faculty week on campus now it's known as University this, Week, yes. but we mm -hmm. found ourselves in the same workshops. And mm -hmm. it was probably the second or third workshop that I, I really recognized. And I thought, huh, we've been at all the same workshops. Mm -hmm. We right. must be, you know, caring about the same issues or looking into the, you know, to this, the things that matter to us. So that's how our relationship started. Right, and then mm -hmm. I pulled you into the community conversation, and you know the rest is history. But Maria <laughs> has, <laughs> yeah, to get to behind all this, yeah, but the yeah, but Maria has years. been such a positive force on campus, but also throughout our whole community, and it's been such my pleasure to get to know her as a oh, human being. Well, it's thank true. you. That's very yeah. sweet. Well, it's true, <laughs> and I want it to be documented how fortunate our community is to have you know, such um, a community-minded faculty member on campus. 
and her and her family live in the community. Well, and, and if I can build on that, though, we are really pleased to be in this community. I'm not sure this kind of a quest or research effort could occur just anywhere. There is something yeah, special no, definitely not. about Plymouth. And and I'm thinking of other towns where right. they would... Right. I've lived in a rough. lot of different yeah, areas, yes. and that's why, yes, yeah. that, there, that it's that special character that Plymouth yes. has that's even making this right. possible. So and we're glad why, to be here. That's <laughs> why we specify, and, and one of our community conversation members does it so eloquently when he says it's about polishing the diamond. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about the fact that we're all it's grumpy Plymouth, people Plymouth living in Plymouth. Diamond. Yes, we already, yeah. <laughs> you know, we have this wonderful community already, but it's about taking us to the next level. We're not focusing on one group or another, oh, okay. uh, however, because there is a little bit already, of, I think, of a, an assumption built in that, in general, the group we're looking at are individuals who would be at least interested mm -hmm. in being connected with their community. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not presume to say that's everybody. I mean, there be, may be some individuals where they find happiness is actually isolated from mm -hmm. their community. Mm -hmm. But what the positive psychology research has shown us is that's not the majority. The majority of people uh, are, may not necessarily be connected, but want to be connected. And so what we're hoping is that the variance of activities, because we have a lot of different activities that will be occurring, that they'll find things, even if they're not connected now, things of interest. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I hope people come out just to try it, a, an activity or two or an event or two. Um, because this is not the type of a, a project where we're forcing anyone right. into it. Right. But yeah. everybody's invited, and I hope everybody feels welcome, because that's the intent of it, is for people to come. Absolutely, and it's already drawn out a lot of curiosity. It's basically <laughs> going to <laughs> look at how a community or a town-wide focus on happiness can potentially raise individual self-reported levels right. of happiness. Yeah. So it's going to be a year-long event. So a year-long event. With various events exactly. and sub-events. Mm -hmm. So lots happening for the next yeah. 12 months but in Plymouth. But you will be back, both of you, to, <laughs> to fill us in on what, um, you know, how it develops, what the results were somewhat, probably not all the results, but and what's to come mm -hmm. as well. Yes. So. Yeah. And I think the most beautiful part is we're doing this together. You know, we're coming out together in a community, and that's exciting in and of itself. So regardless of what the data shows, this is going to be a really fun year. And getting I'm to looking forward neighbor. to it. Yeah. That's right. And we'll be filming some of those events as well. Right. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Signing off. Maria and Jess and Julia. So what, now, now we dance?